welcome everyone. Um, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. Um, as you know, my name is Sunny, and I am actually uh, in the process of finishing, uh, completing my PhD degree, um, which actually should have happened this summer, but things are delayed. No surprise to everyone. <laughs> um, so uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, I'll be getting my PhD. And oh, thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's me. I'm in my um, fifth year of my PhD program. So I've been in UCI for five years, uh, probably a little bit more than most of you. Um, and I have uh, been teaching summer sessions quite a few times already. Um, this is not the first time, but this is the first time I'm doing this online. Um, uh, I didn't teach any course on summer session one. So uh, if you guys have um, taken summer session one, you guys might be even more comfortable with this format than I am. But uh, I've been TAing, um, I've been a teaching assistant in during normal quarters for almost every session. Um, yeah, and uh, I have done, I've actually done 3B a lot of times. For some reason, they keep assigning me 3B. So um, I, pro I know this in the back of my head. Um, yeah, so that, that's me. Um, a little bit more about me. I'm, uh, my research in physics, uh, my specialty is in theoretical physics. Um, anyone watched Big Bang Theory? If you guys know Sheldon, that's basically what I do. <laughs> that's my one sentence way of explaining. So now that uh, people are warmed up, I think you guys are relatively familiar with the thumbs up, uh, the, uh, the raise hand button, and also the chat. So that's, that's going to be uh, a, uh, how I want to use um, these lectures, these Zooms uh, lectures. Um, and in a second, I'll also um, split you guys up into breakout rooms uh, in uh, groups of three or four, just to say hi, just to give you around four minutes-ish, uh, less than five minutes to to say hi to each other, um, just to, so uh, especially in these times, we, we, it's great to have a little bit more human interaction. So it's, um, yeah, so, so it's good to know a few people. And as you know, we'll be using Slack uh, for, for, some, for the communications. And uh, one benefit for Slack is you can easily uh, create, if you know, start to get to know a few of each other, so you can um, get together, uh, you can message each other and form a little study group um, of whatever size you like. You can create any private channels. Um, you can create a private channel on, chat, uh, on Slack um, and you can ask questions. Um, of course, Piazza, as, as I'll go and talk about, um, Piazza is probably what I want to encourage everyone to use um, because every, there's the benefit of um, if you ask a question, and everyone will get to see the answer as well. But sometimes, you know, you want to form a little study group. Um, so yeah, Slack would be able to do that. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, uh, also, um, just before we jump into other physics, want to um, address the, the, the clear fact that um, everyone is tuning in this very special time in, in, in history, uh, where there's so much going on in the world um, uh, the, with the uh, virus of COVID-19 being least of their worries, um, but still a very important issue. Um, so I'm really, I'm really impressed by um, so many people signing up to this class and um, I really respect, in general, I, I always respect so much that people join in in summer sessions because summer session is, um, you, 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 it's not a normal school time. And everyone who comes in summer sessions are uh, usually people who uh, are very um, diligent in trying to get a good grade, study well, um, are very hardworking. So um, congratulations on that and uh, well done for making it here. It is a tough time, I understand, um, for everyone. Um, trying to adjust to just learning at home, it's not gonna be easy. Um, if any of you have any close friends or uh, relatives or family that is affected by the virus, um, I also uh, want to um, express my sympathy to you guys. Um, I actually know a professor's uh, mother passed away from the, uh, from the virus. So um, hope everyone is staying safe and uh, taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, um, being cautious when you go out, uh, just um, the common sense. Even if you have no, um, peop no close friends who are affected or no family members who are affected, um, uh, just, I I'm sure we all want this to be over as soon as possible. Um, it, at least personally, there's nothing more I like more than interacting with students, get to talk to students and interact with students in person. Um, I mean, there's, there's just only so much you can do uh, remotely and so much uh, close interactions we can do. So personally, I want to, of course, we all want this to be over as soon as possible. So, um, and it, I understand even if you're not uh, directly af uh, affected, this. Just, just trying to study at home, and especially during summertime and, um, or even internationally, it's not gonna be easy. So uh, well done for taking the step to do this. Um, I know some of you might be retaking the course, but still, the, um, the, in fact, um, 3B is one of the more difficult uh, uh, class. So in, uh, I think 3B is the most difficult one out of the three series from A, B, and C. So um, that, uh, 
physics takes I, I I personally I it takes me a lot of uh, iterations to learn physics properly and there's just so much depth and so much insight in physics um, uh, that repetition is really the, the best way to learn so um, good job in just coming back in in summer and and uh, doing that and uh, really to my my uh, message to everyone is if if you can do this if you can uh, get through this course physics three B in particular um, which is uh, the particularly difficult one uh, with under these circumstances I'm sure you can do any thing in the future. Any courses will not be a challenge. And um, as we all know, it's a good opportunity if there's a silver lining in any of this. Um, the, 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 um, the goal is to, um, this is a good training for you guys to uh, realize the world just keeps changing and we have to learn how to adapt to that. Right? Okay. Um, all right, so with that public announcement um, out of the way, um, let's see. Uh, oh, let me answer this question from chat first about uh, course preparation books. Um, preparation, not specifically, but just we'll use the uh, formal, uh, the, the, the official textbook, um, which is uh, G.N. Coley, or however you pronounce that. I think most of you, if you've done 3A, you have that book already. Um, if not, you can go through the ca uh, UCI catalog and get access to that. But yeah, all right, so that's that. Um, let's see, so uh, Zoom etiquettes, we've gone through that. Um, Survey comments, uh, hopefully, I know I've been looping this in the background. You guys uh, probably see some answers to that already. And yeah, all right, so before I split you guys in a group, just to uh, at least have a few friends in this course, um, let me address the, the, the biggest um, admin issue first about the alternate, uh, uh, alternative lecture schedule, which um, I'm kind of trying to push. <laughs> um, Personally, I'm not a morning person, uh, so uh, I don't know about you guys. Um, uh, so uh, there, there are a couple of reasons um, that uh, I want to do and just want to explain. Um, good, it's not only me. <laughs> uh, that I want to explain my logic for, for this. Uh, first of all, yes, the lectures are recorded. Um, so you might be wondering, if it's recorded, uh, do I still have to come to live lectures? Um, is, uh, uh, is it required um, and uh, should I do it? Uh, first of all, it's not required. Um, uh, I highly encourage it. Okay, for uh, let me explain my three reasonings for that. Um, first of all, is uh, it, you you from your perspective, you will learn better um, on, on that uh, the, for for two reasons. Um, number one, uh, when you feel like someone is talking live to you, and uh, I uh, at least what I'm trying to do is respond to any live comments that you put on the chat. You will pay more attention. I'm not saying you won't pay it. I think it's just new human nature. So that uh, is a small factor. So if you guys want to, I, I've seen in the comments, a lot of you want to get an A or uh, do a great job or get a solid foundation, a good understanding of physics, etc. To your benefit, I, I really highly encourage live lectures. So um, uh, I, I hope we can find a good time that works for most people. Um, if in the end it has to be this time, I'm, I'm okay with it because uh, it is assigned to me, so I have to. <laughs> um, so if this is the best time for everyone to do a live lecture, we'll stick with it. But if there's a more preferable time that everyone agrees on, um, at least I hope that 95% of the people agree on. Um, so out of 140, that's around, hopefully it won't affect more than seven people. Um, if it does affect the seven people, first of all, sorry, um, but hopefully you can catch up with the recordings. But yeah, so that's one reason for live lectures. And secondly is repetition. Um, as I mentioned already, physics is one of those subjects where it the more you hear about, the, if you hear about the same thing from different perspectives or just the, with the same perspective different times, you will get things that you know the second time round um, that the first time you haven't. Um, and it's so much more important than in, in physics, uh, especially. Uh, I'm sure you have this experience. Even if you watch a movie the second time, you'll notice little details, right, that you have never seen or read a book. Uh, if you've ever read a book multiple times, you realize the second time round, you, you catch little bits and pieces out of it. So that's just for entertainment pu uh, 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 purpose. So imagine for studying. If you come to the live lectures, and then uh, later on when you revise and do your studying um, and re do your revision, uh, and you watch it and you need to pick up certain things and you want to watch it again, you'll learn much better than if you just watch it the first time, right? Um, in a recording. So, so that's one. Um, secondly is, especially during these times, it, it gives you a good steady schedule or give you a routine because I'm going to emphasize this later on as well. And I'm sure you know already in summer session, we only have five weeks. So in five weeks, um, we're cramming in 10 weeks of stuff, which is actually quite intense. Hopefully you guys are doing less courses than usual, um, but still it, uh, 3B physics, it is, it is, takes time to practice and absorb the material, to digest it, to, to think. Um, critical thinking is a skill um, that I'll uh, also keep emphasizing in, the, in this whole course um, to train. So um, yeah, so, so falling behind is a very big 
uh, falling behind schedule is a very big um, uh, a thing that you want to avoid, right? So um, if you do have to miss a lecture, as, as, you, as you know, I'm not gonna take attendance. Um, it, and if you disagree with the philosophy, feel free to do it. As you'll hear me say later on many times is, as long as you can, um, if I give you a test and you can do well on it, that's, that's all I ask. <laughs> but uh, so these are all just my personal suggestions and I strongly recommend this. Um, so giving yourself a routine to come to the lectures. Uh, so you're on track every day, right? Monday to Thursday, or if we decide to do it twice a week, Either way, you're, you're having a regular schedule. I think that will be beneficial um, in a time where we don't have a lot of regularity in our lives. And thirdly, uh, the third reason is just a little bit for personally, um, it's, more, it's, it's more engaging for me <laughs> if people show up. Um, otherwise, it's like talking into, into dead air for, with, or just um, pathetically having one student on the other end. <laughs> um, and that, that's less interesting for me, um, although that's personal. Um, however, uh, uh, um, I think it affects you as well because the more interactions I can do or I, the more engaging I can make the lectures, the, the better, the more entertaining it will be for you to rewatch as well. So even if once or twice you cannot join the live lecture and you're rewatching re a whole one and a half hour lecture, you, I, I hope the more people show up, uh, usually the better job I do um, in making it interesting. And hopefully that would be for you as well. Right. So, so ultimately it benefits you because um, honestly speaking, if I don't do a good job in the lectures, um, it doesn't really affect me. <laughs> <laughs> Other than my evaluation, maybe, which is sad, uh, but I know the stuff. I've seen this before, um, so uh, mainly it's it's for you. All right, so hopefully that that's the three reasons. Um, and how will I record it, and when will they be posted? Um, uh, so after I record it, um, I plan to post it uh, in two places. Um, one is uh, on Yuja. If you don't know that, that's just there's a link. I'll make it available on Canvas later on. Uh, so the full lecture, I'll just put it on on Yuja and I'll have that link under the lecture page uh, in the Canvas course page. Uh, it'll be obvious where you'll find it. Okay. And secondly, I might, uh, it, it is a suggestion that I got from TA in uh, the spring quarter where uh, I was a TA uh, and um, I was asking all the students, uh, what is a good way to do lectures? Um, and they say, try, if, if I can chop the lectures up into, uh, uh, or if the, they were talking about those professors. It, it, some professors, what they did was um, chop up the lectures into little pieces on, on certain one concept at a time into something like 10, 15 min minutes video each um, and separate that. Uh, and they find that very helpful. And I agree, uh, it's almost like watching a YouTube video. It's much more easier to absorb that information. So uh, other than the Yuja posting the whole lecture, um, I plan to, um, I don't want to make any promise, but this is what I hope to do. So I want to, um, uh, uh, do that and, and do some editing and chop up the videos and then I'll uh, post it up on YouTube and I'll uh, make the link also, I'll put the link also available on the Canvas website. It'll be uh, obvious where you will find it later on. Okay. Um, uh, one thing as you notice in the Canvas page, I try to limit the menu items so they're very limited. Uh, so there's not too much place you'll get lost in Canvas and hopefully you'll be able to find that. Another benefit for YouTube, by the way, is, um, oh, by the way, uh, when I say edit, I will make sure I edit out any people's speaking or so if, if there's anyone who who um who speak up uh, feel free to talk uh, and anything um i will make sure uh, no one will will uh just for privacy issues i'll, I'll make sure no one's re recording will, will get posted publicly um so hopefully anything i post publicly will just be basically me talking to a camera so in principle no one's stopping me from posting those videos <laughs> all right uh, right so another benefit uh, i was going to say is um you can actually use youtube comments um and uh, if if there, you have something don't you don't understand i um one thing I will try to do is, um, it's just a little uh, a fun thing for me, I, I, I hope to try, is uh, I'll read through all the comments as well. So if you, if, you if you watch a 10 minute video or 15 minute video and you realize, oh, at 7.32 I said something, um, either I make a mistake uh, that you saw or just something you don't understand, you can uh, comment down there. Um, and uh, either you guys, some of you guys, your classmates can reply to that um, or I will reply to that, right? So that's another good way to, to utilize that. Hopefully that's okay with everyone. Okay, so that's the lectures, right? All right, so trying to find a, a time. Um, I'm, I'm now, uh, I, there's over 100 responses on, the, the, on that survey, so I'm trying to go through that. And I think uh, there are special comments I want to point out. People say they are, um, some of you are working on a job, uh, so, um, and you might need to work, you know, from nine to five or something like that. Uh, so hopefully I'm leaning towards finding a time after five. Um, internationally, if you're, if anyone is from Asia, uh, that will correspond to your morning. So hopefully that works well as well. Um, and the only thing is maybe if anyone's from the East Coast, it will be a little bit later at night uh, after five uh, from here. But hopefully that's 
uh, doable. So what I will do is, um, we'll, I'll confirm it on Wednesday. Okay, I'll confirm it latest by Wednesday night on what we'll do for starting week two. For week one, nothing is going to change. We're going to stick with this so that everyone just get used to, used to this first. Um, so there's no big changes. Um, and maybe um, either later tonight or maybe tomorrow, uh, once I sim through the options, I will uh, narrow it down to maybe two options. And then I will give you one last survey. I, I know people hate surveys. I understand that. But I'll give you just one last survey um, to ask you, um, can you do those two options like that? Um, and I'll see how, how the response is. And, uh, so that, uh, and, and then I'll confirm it by Wednesday. Okay. Does that make sense? Good. OK, hopefully you'll know my reasons, reasoning for that. Um, all right, so uh, let's, um, uh, good. So I'm just on track with time, good. Uh, so I'll give you four minutes um, to say hi to each other. I'll split you guys into a breakout room uh, just randomly. Um, good. Hopefully you guys know each other a little bit and get an, uh, maybe hopefully you remember your names and maybe on Slack you can um, uh, hit each other up if you want to form some study groups as well. Um, good. So, so before I uh, go on, uh, let me sh um, share a little bit about uh, the goals of this course and also just to dispel a few misconceptions in physics first um, uh, be before we start. Um, first of all, uh, I it is, it is almost a cliche to hear that physics is probably the most difficult um, out of sci uh, all the science. Um, and always, I feel that is always some sort of misconception, at least to me. Um, and I want to at least share with you what I feel um, is uh, two, two main misconceptions. Number one, um, hopefully, and hopefully these are the two things you will take away from the course, uh, uh, other than just learning, you know, all the formulas and all that boring stuff. But the two things to take away is number one, uh, physics is simple. I know I probably lost a lot of you already immediately, but I'll explain that in a second. And secondly, physics can be fun. Okay, probably I lose even more of you there. <laughs> but uh, all right, what do I mean by physics is simple? Um, so this is one thing I want you to learn in this course. Um, not about all the formulas. Not you know remembering all the that's the boring stuff. Remembering all the formulas and probably solving the uh, things. The key goal and why you are being even forced to take a physics class, I think uh, a lot of you, you don't really have a choice. Um, some of you might, but um, the reason is not to learn all those formulas because once you graduate, who cares about those formulas, honestly, right? Um, you don't, who, when will you ever use those things in life? The, really, the, the goal of making everyone get some physics education is to learn how to think like a physicist. What do I mean by that? Thinking like a physicist is, so this is the goal I want to try to teach in this course. Um, one thing that physicists, um, do really well. I think every subject, any major you do, there's something that each major trains you to think like. So if you take a, um, a, a, a English literature class um, in literature, you, it will teach you to think in a certain way. And in physics, it teaches you to think in another way. So in sometimes in life, thinking like an a, 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 a artist is very beneficial. And sometimes in life, um, thinking like a physicist is very beneficial. So to be a whole rounded person, that's why we want you to um, learn how to do this. So what is the benefit of thinking like a physicist? One thing that physics is very powerful at is to take a very complicated problem. And this is almost our instinct. If you talk to anyone, of, uh, anyone in the physics department, our instinct, take a complex problem. The first thing we do is chop it up into a million pieces of very tiny problems. Not a million, but a, a handful of very tiny problems. Then we attack each, pro each problem one at a time. So I know it sounds simple, but it's a way of thinking. Um, this particular way actually is not all powerful. I want to clarify, I'm not really, uh, although I love physics, it's not, uh, I'm not saying this is the best subject of all because it has its limitations. For example, it fails when you're trying to appreciate art or uh, literature because sometimes you cannot, in those cases, a lot of humanities uh, scenario, it is impossible to really disentangle any, everything. But in science, a lot of times you can. And that's why uh, anyone who does science sort of most schools will force you to do a little bit of physics to get this type of education. And it is very powerful, but it's not limited just to science. In, I find in my daily life, um, uh, if, when I'm given a very big problem, uh, for example, one problem is after I graduate, I need to find a job. <laughs> so this is a very real life problem. Um, how do I do it? And with this training, I'm able to take this very potentially daunting issue and just, uh, chop it into little pieces. What am I gonna do today? Uh, what am I, and then everything. Um, and then I solve little problems at a time. So physics is this. So that's what I mean by physics is simple because if you know the skill, if you can learn the skill from this course or from this three series, you'll be able to take a complicated issue 
someone's hitting me on Slack. I'm not going to worry about that a second. <laughs> you can take a complicated issue and, uh, and break it into little pieces. And each little problem now is a simple problem. If it's not simple enough, break it up further. Now you are only solving simple problems. So big, solving big problems just becomes solving a series of simple problems. That's what I mean by physically simple. Just to give you a little bit more concrete example. Most of you have done 3A, right? The prerequisite for this course. You've heard so many times um, when they start a question, they'll say, ignore air resistance or ignore friction, right? You've heard that so many times. Um, in some sense, when I'm teaching engineer students, I often say, um, physics is so much simpler because anything that's complicated, we ignore it <laughs> as a joke. We ignore it and we leave it to the engineers. <laughs> so in some sense, you guys should be happy that you guys are forced to do physics, not engineering, because you have to deal with way more complicated real life scenarios. All right, so what's the, why are we splitting this? So a lot of people think that when we split it, when we start ignoring you know, all the real life things, uh, friction, air resistance, things that do exist in real life, it makes physics either unrealistic or abstract. Well, uh, on the surface, it seems so. But if you think a little bit deeper, or if you get more experience with physics, you realize that's not at all what we do. When we say ignore, uh, well, ignore friction or ignore air resistance, what we're saying, what we really should be saying is ignore it for now. Okay? And in fact, the second powerful thing um, that physicists are good at thinking, um, the, the way of thinking, is determining what is important and what is second of secondary importance and what is of tertiary importance. We immediately, we look at a problem and we can immediately see a hierarchy of that. So hopefully you can get a little bit of that sense in this course as well. So when we, if I'm really trying to analyze, if I want to drop an apple from a certain height down here, and I want to know if, I, if an apple dropped from a tree and hit my head, I want to know how, how painful is it. The air resistance is not going to increase my pain or decrease my pain that much. It's going to be a very secondary issue. So if you don't have the physics training, you might think, oh, there's so much thing I need to worry about. How is, did someone turn the AC on? Is there some wind blowing over that will, will, the, will something, um, uh, something else will affect the apple? But physicists will look at this and immediately be able to look, realize what's the dominant effect. The, the most important effect is gravity. We'll analyze that first, ignore everything else. Good, now we have the first order answer. The answer is it will hit me with a force of 10 Newtons. All right, good. So first of all, I know that hurts. <laughs> then, um, what's the second most important thing? Probably wind. All right, now let's take into account of that. Okay, so now, it'll real, and then we do that calculation, and maybe it confirms our suspicion that that is just affects, change the answer from 10 to 10.1. So, would we be happy with 10? Most likely, yes. Um, if you want to build a bridge, like an engineer, is there a difference between 10 and 10.1? Absolutely. So, you do need to include that. So, what you guys are doing in this basic physics course in the free series is learning all the basics of physics, right? So, so you're learning the first level. Um, and in fact, if you find this difficult, you probably are glad that you don't have to do the next level. So I completely disagree that physics is unrealistic. It's extremely realistic and we're just doing it in stages, right? So um, in fact, just to give you a little secret, most physicists don't even care about the third, well, second, all right, maybe not that bad, but if it's third or fourth level down, we don't care about it. We allocate that. That's what engineering is for. <laughs> That's to make, take the same principles. What we do is we study the, the fundamental principles and those principles don't change. No matter which level you're looking at, they don't change, right? So, so you, can, you can do it more accurate and more accurately and get a very accurate result using the same principles. So that's why. Um, first of all, that's why it's powerful. Um, and most physicists, after a few levels, there's nothing much new and we lose interest. <laughs> that's another joke with engineers. Hopefully there's not too much engineers in this class. <laughs> um, you know, I'm joking. Uh, right, so um, yeah, so it, since you, so hopefully that gives you a perspective, what was it, right? So um, yeah, so, so you should be glad that since you're taking a basic physics course, anything complicated, let me reiterate this um, half a joke, is anything complicated, you don't have to worry about it. What you're studying is the simplest parts of physics, right? Now, you might still think it's difficult. It's because you're not thinking like a physicist. You might be worrying about too much stuff. Most, most of the time, um, when I see, when I interact with students, when they struggle, it's not because they don't understand the concepts. They are worried about too many things that are affected by it. So over the course, usually, hopefully, um, a lot of times I manage to get students to think of, start to, by the end of the course, they start to think about things in a different way and they uh, are able to see that, oh, there's a simplicity in this. Right, uh, I quickly mention also the fun part is um, this part I actually resonate with you. With the topics you are learning is actually not the most fun things in physics. Uh, what I get to do and what I'm most interested in physics is learn about um, how the universe works, what, how the, what are black holes, what, how this galaxy works, how does the universe begin, how does the universe end, will it end, how, if it does end, how will it die? All these questions are the big questions that 
hundreds of years ago, you know, starting from Newton, Isaac Newton, all the way, you know, Albert Einstein are thinking with these are the most interesting things um, people are interested in in physics. Now, the tools that we use, yes, we, we need to analyze forces and stuff. Those become second nature because we've done it so many times. Um, so unfortunately, everyone has to start somewhere. Um, learning about, uh, um, Learning about a ball rolling down the slope. Honestly, if you ask anyone from the physics department, no one really cares about that. Um, only engineers do. Um, <laughs> I should stop doing that. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, but um, my, I hope uh, in this course three B, even though it's challenging because there's so much new material, it is actually a little bit more interesting than ball rolling down slope. So hopefully, I can uh, do the best I can uh, I can with the material I'm given with the um, content I'm given and try to make it as interesting as possible for you and try to give you different uh, anecdotes and. Um, things about uh, other side stories to, to make things more interesting as well. Okay. Right, so um, that's that. And then um, another thing is I want to emphasize um, how you should study for this course. Okay. First of all, uh, this is actually a document. I, I feel a little bit silly showing you guys this because most of you are not new to college. Um, you guys have been studying university uh, for, uh, classes for a while, but this is usually something I give for um, people who first come to uh, graduate from high school and get into college. Um, and they would, because in the media and, and just from layman's point of view, I heard so many times people get the wrong idea about, phys uh, about college, sorry. Um, and when they come into college, they expect uh, people to hold their hand to spoon feed them every single material. And first off, I want to tell you that's not what I'm going to do. And that's not the point of you coming here at all as well. Right? So uh, the point, just to summarize this, is the point of college is learn how to learn. Right? As I mentioned, as you heard me say already, is I don't care, when you graduate from this course, if, who cares about the formulas you learn in this course? That's not the most important. Thing. Okay, maybe you need to take the MCAT. Yes, <laughs> so that's one thing. Um, but after that, you know, it's not that. That's not the most important thing. This is the skill we want you to learn. Um, for physics specifically, yeah, think like a physicist. But for college in general, what you really want to know, learn is learn how to learn things on your own. Learn very advanced material on your own, especially in these days with the virus going on, um, people are starting to doubt, you know, what's the point of college? Uh, this is actually getting more relevant as well. People start to think, oh, um, uh, I'm paying this much and, um, it, and no one's going to teach me. I'm relying on myself. Well, um, to be honest with you, you to come to the, if you think back in university, what is university for? University is never built to get you a job. So, so many people think that, oh, I got, the uh, I got a degree, I got an undergraduate degree and I still can't find a job, you know? So, and, and people are talking about, you don't have to get a degree to find a job. I completely agree, first of all. So if your goal is to just find a job, university is not a necessity. Now, a caveat is this, a lot of employers do want that, do want a university degree. Why is that? It's because if you think that, why is a university created? University's primary goal is to do research. If you look at any mission statement of a university, is to push the, human, the frontier of human um, academic knowledge, to, uh, of human knowledge about the, the world, the universe, the, the place we live in, right? That, that's the point university is for. So if you look at professors in their job description, the first and foremost job, uh, their primary duty is to do research. The second duty, teaching is something they have to do, um, and they, they're not hired for that. So if, if you have experience, I'm sure you do with, uh, with professors who don't care um, at all uh, about teaching or if they're doing a bad job. In some sense, you can't blame them. Of course, hopefully they should do a good job. And um, personally, I'm interested in, in education and teaching, so I hopefully we'll do a good job. But just want to emphasize that if, if any time you see that I'm not holding your hand or if another professor is not holding your hand, just keep in mind that is not what it is for. And, um, and this is what it's for. Uh, so why do employers re want this, is want a degree nowadays? Um, it's really because, let's say if you, the paper, the, the certificate that you graduate with, what that says is not telling the employer that you know all these formulas or these facts or knowledge you learn from the course. Maybe for some technical jobs, that's half of it. But the other half, or the more important in my opinion, is it's a proof that you know how to learn on your own. You can, do, you can learn anything that someone throws at you. Especially in the four years of college, you're thrown at a lot of advanced material. You know, in this course, we're going to talk about electricity and magnetism, something very mysterious, um, if you think about it. Because if I have a positive charge and a positive charge, you know, we all know they repel, but nothing's touching it, right? Um, how, do, how does that happen? This is, these are very high-level questions with high-level answers. So it's not easy at all, but we make you learn it. And if you can learn it, and if you can get a good GPA, you can get a good result, that means you can do well 
even when we throw at you abstract concepts or difficult things. So when you get a job, a lot of employers want this degree because it proves that you can learn these difficult things on your own. So let's say you're going into IT. Um, uh, so if you did, did a, um, uh, if you, uh, did, that, in fact, actually before I come to PhD, I actually got a job in the industry, in a financial uh, technology uh, firm, consulting firm. So I had no, I didn't take any single class on computer science, or programming or, um, or finance uh, at all. Uh, I had a mathematics and physics degree. Why do they hire me? Oh, sure, mathematics kind of is related, but the main thing is they're thinking, should I hire a finance person who knows some financial facts or should I hire someone who might take a little while to learn the stuff, but he will learn it quickly, he or she will learn it quickly. And maybe even with the ability to do critical thinking, think out of the box, um, use the power of um, thinking like a physicist, like I talked about, he will be able to produce new ideas. That's more desirable. So that's why you're getting a degree, right? Um, that's why your employers want the degree, not really for your, not really for your, um, your facts or knowledge. Um, if you go into it, the, the world changes as we know very well nowadays, the world changes so much that knowing the facts doesn't really give you an edge, doesn't give you an advantage. Knowing how to pick up new things, it, it does give you an advantage, right? So uh, I don't want to be too um, preachy, so hopefully, um, gives you a basic idea of the philosophy I'm working under. It's really an in, independent study, but I'm going to provide you. Um, I, I, it sounds like an excuse I can <laughs> to excuse myself from doing a bad job, but hopefully um, uh, you know where I'm coming from with this. Um, so your major really doesn't matter. Learn how to learn and also enjoy what you learn. Um, I think that's the advice I can give you with this. Okay, and all right. So um, uh, also, oh, um, some people might, just one last thing about this, uh, some people might argue, well, I'm paying a lot, shouldn't the professor do more? Um, yes and no, but really you're paying for much more than, first of all, I do think the college is overpriced. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that, um, but uh, uh, if it's up to me, it should be free or uh, very affordable. Anyway, uh, politics aside, um, they, what you're paying for is not just for the lessons. So um, I know it's less great that we're doing things through Zoom, um, but you're also getting all the, um, all the structure around it. So the idea is there is someone as an instructor like me. I, if, you, if I just tell you to learn physics or learn how to think like a physicist, you won't know where to start. So that's where my job comes in um, or a professor's job come in is to tell you, all right, start from learning forces, then learn fluids, then learn heat and magnetism and electricity. They'll tell you, okay, follow the structure. You'll do well that way, right? They, they're not trying to teach you everything. And that's what I will tell you in a second. In my lectures, what you should do is you should treat the lectures as telling you what you need to know. And you are going to do the hard work. You're going to do the job of learning it. We are going to help you with that, okay? So that's the attitude we're going to work with. And also you're paying for, um, you know, all the, the, the homework uh, that, um, that is basically guiding you how to go, go through it. There's graders, there's TAs who's going to grade it. Um, and also just the community, right? You, you have access to a huge library, which nowadays is not such a big deal because of the internet. There's much more, um, but sure, that's one thing, but also um, just access to professors. And that's a big deal. Um, imagine if you're not go coming to college at all and you want to learn physics for any reasons, and you want to email a professor out of the blue would they even reply to you if you're not a student, right? If they're nice, maybe, but if you bug them 10 times a day or, you know, once a week, let's say once a week, if you're not a student, then we start doubting what are you doing here? Um, but with, with this, you're getting office hours. Basically, you have access to this, right? So think of it as the professors are not there to teach you, but they are experts in their fields, hopefully. <laughs> That's why they're professors, not teachers. I always mention that. They're professionals in their field. So imagine if you're interested in tech and basically what you get is you're getting access. Let's say you get an access to Elon Musk. And I say, pay a certain amount of dollars. Um, you can go and spend the day with Elon Musk. You can get access to him. It's your job to learn from him, not his job to teach you. If you go into an Elon Musk seminar and come out and say, he's a terrible teacher. I didn't learn anything. That probably says more about you than, than, um, the, the, than that. All right. Having said that, again, hopefully I'm doing a good job with this um, and uh, not simply an excuse for this. All right. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Um, all right, good. Okay, so just quickly, as I mentioned the emails already, um, if you want to communicate to me in this course, 90% um, of the time, I think you should go to Piazza. That should be your go-to. I've used Piazza before. Um, I've TA'd for professors using it before, and I, af after you get used to it, I think the student really likes it. Because, uh, so if you have any physics question, um, 
trying to explain, trying to answer someone else's physics question is the best way to learn, to be honest. So I really encourage you guys to uh, check that regularly um, and try to answer other people's physics question. Of course, if you have a physics question, other people will then be able to help you as well. So it's a great peer learning environment um, and just trying to answer things. Um, I can't tell you how much physics I learned more after I start teaching. <laughs> um, sounds stupid, but yeah. Uh, so try to teach people concepts. You will learn much more for that. And uh, if you have an admin question, um, you might get an answer quicker, you know, than emailing me. Uh, first, hopefully you check the website, check the syllabus first, um, and it, or if you want a quick answer, you, know, you will probably get that. Now, sometimes you don't want to, everyone to see your questions and that's where Slack comes in. So the other 9% of time, if you want, uh, basically pro I will use it to um, communicate to you, give announcements, um, and uh, uh, yes, and if you want to direct message me through there, you feel free to do that as well. Okay. All right, so if uh, anything fails, if everything fails, you can always email me. Okay. Uh, I should have said email over here, but there you go. All right, so just to get everyone uh, um, motivated to use Piazza and actually help everyone out, um, and, uh, I will have 10% of uh, extra credit. You can do that. So in principle, you can actually get over 100%. We'll cap at 100, right? So, so realistically, it is possible to get 100% in this course. Um, and you can get extra credit for both posting and answering questions. I want to encourage both, right? I mentioned this already. Um, yep, so that's that, all right? Uh, so, uh, due to time, maybe I won't go through in detail. I was just going to demonstrate um, it, uh, but yeah, I'll just quickly go, uh, show you. Um, you guys already had some experience with replying to things. So whenever you have a question, um, just click new posts, uh, click to question, select one of the chapters appropriately. Um, uh, you, yeah, so maybe it's on chapter one. Um, if you type a one-line summary, it'll show up here so people can look over here, keep it as, as uh, concise as possible. Type your answers here. It's a great platform. You can actually copy and paste images. You can do screenshots and uh, snapshots um, of things, and then you can paste things over here. And then you can, uh, I'm on an instructor view, but if you're a student view, you will have the option to post anonymously. Um, actually, you have a couple of options. Um, yeah, and then you can post. Let me go back here. Yeah, so type in here. Um, oh, another thing is as soon as you type in the summary, it will actually suggest to you if there's any similar posts. So if it is a duplicate question, maybe you can see that, oh, it's duplicate and you can look at there and you don't need to spam the uh, content with uh, duplicate um, questions. Right. And then you can, uh, here you'll have a couple options. Um, I recommend just making it anonymous to classmate. If you want to show your name, that's fine. But uh, um, do you, uh, don't do anonymous to everyone because later on, uh, when I look at extra credits, uh, I won't be able to see your name. So I need to be able to see your name. So your classmates won't be able to see who you are, but instructors and TAs, we will um, that way. Okay. The question on the chat, is there a criteria that each post must get to get the extra credit? Uh, no, um, not really. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not giving extra credit from anything before this. Uh, so starting week one, uh, because it's not fair, some people have signed up and some people haven't yet. So I want to start with week one. So after this lesson, any, any type of question. Um, I'll trust you guys, you know, don't, don't post stupid questions. <laughs> um, tr try to use it as, you, as, as properly as possible. Um, yeah, and I'll trust you guys with that. Right. So uh, yeah, um, sometimes, I know sometimes there would be trivial questions. Feel free to do that. I, I, won't, I won't be too stringent on it. I'll be very flexible on it. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, um, I can... I can actually show you, let's see, go to inactive class on spring when I did exactly this class, physics 3B. Let me switch over there and see. Cool. You can actually see this is um, the spring class, IT84, and it is actually very active. Um, and a lot of, okay, so Zoom, when I'm sharing my screen, it's a little bit slower. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, so people are asking things like, uh, can I use scientific calculator and stuff like that? If it's a question like this, hopefully someone else would read the syllabus and answer this so that I don't have to. I'll, and if I see a good answer, I'll just endorse it. Okay. And uh, yeah, so people would talk about magnetic forces. Right. So let's see. Um, just give you an example. I want to see if someone have, did a copy and paste with their picture. There we go. So uh, this is a good idea as well. You can uh, show, sometimes it's good to show what you've done and not just a blanket question of, um, Oh, help me! <laughs> uh, show people what you've done, uh, or you know, T, especially me and TAs love at least seeing the students put in some effort uh, to do that. Um, I mean, it, technically, you will still get credits for it, just asking a, a question, but you know, just for your own learning sake, um, I think that's a good idea to do. And yeah, so hopefully, you get an idea what to do here. 
um, yeah, you can uh, screenshot and extra slides and stuff like this. All right, any questions on this? Oh, one thing you should not, you're, you should not be posting on Piazza is full solutions. So do not post a full homework solution um, on there. That defeats the point of homework. So if I do see those posts, I will take them down. Right? So you won't get credit for that. Um, so no full solutions. You can give hints. You can give as much hints as possible. Just don't write out step by step that you, people can just copy off. It's not going to benefit you as well. You know, people are copying off your work. Why would you want to do that? Okay. All right. So that's that. Any questions on that? So that's Piazza. Okay. So um, I'm going to make the extra credit simple. If you did five or more, um, so anything less than five, you won't get extra credits. More than five posts, you get five percent. Uh, more than ten posts, you get ten percent. And um, at the, I will. You don't have to worry about how to get the credits. I will. I don't want to bombard you with too much information on our first day. So I'll talk about how to actually uh, claim these extra credits towards the end. So don't worry about it for now. Um, either towards the end or maybe just later on. I don't want the first day to bombard you with too much information. I'll explain. Just, just do it normally. Just go and make posts. We'll, uh, you, you, uh, we'll go through that um, later. Is that 5 10% increase of our final grade? Yes. So let's say ignoring extra credit, uh, you, got, um, you got 80% um, and then you made six posts in your lifetime. Um, I mean, during the course <laughs> on Piazza, uh, then you get 85%. That way. All right. Um, all right. Uh, I am also not going to curve things. I'm, I'm going to go through that a little, a little bit more. Uh, then I'll explain the course components first. Oh, um, Slack. Uh, one thing is I'm going to make announcements through there, and also TAs will probably use it as well. Um, honestly speaking, Piazza I've used it before uh, in a class. Slack I haven't. It's something new. Um, so I'm not sure how well it will go. Uh, if it goes horribly, maybe it will stretch. But I. I mean, I use it with my research group and things like that. So uh, I don't think, I think it'll be working fine. Okay. Um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't get spammed with notifications, only probably when this first week when everyone's signing up, I want everyone to post something just to get yourself familiar with the platform. Um, but after this, you shouldn't, as I say, 90% of the time you should be using Piazza. The only time you get a notification, so turn on your notification because the only time uh, you'll get a notification is if I or the TA wants to communicate with you. Okay. Um, so yeah. And if you have any follow up on a certain announcement, use the reply in thread. Um, actually, I have it here. So if, let's say, you want to comment on this, actually, I, made, I talked about this already, um, use the reply in thread so it keeps the main channel sort of clean. And people can, if they don't care about the extra questions, they just want to look at what the announcements are, they can just scroll through this page and it doesn't go, go through things like, uh, uh, what do you mean by this? You know? So if you, say, if you want to say, uh, oh, I, I don't get what you mean by this announcement, use reply in thread over here. All right, good. If there's any questions, just pop it in chat. Okay. Um, good. All right, so this is in the syllabus already. Just going to quickly mention this homework 25%, topic test uh, 25 So we won't have a midterm. And the reason I'm calling it topic test is uh, I want to call it a test because it's a little bit more important than a quiz and uh, less important than a proper midterm because you'll have five of them. Okay. Um, because it's a five week schedule, I don't want to. And don't want you to have 10 different quizzes. Um, that would be way too much. Um, so probably just once a week is good enough. But that week will test you in normal situations, two week stuff, uh, like in a normal quarter, two weeks stuff of material. So it's a little bit more important than a quiz and halfway between a quiz and a midterm. So that's why I decided to give it a topic test. And nicely, our, our topics actually split into week by week. So um, every, every test will actually test on a very self-contained topic. So that works out nicely. You won't have any tests for the first week. So the first one will be next Tuesday's discussion session. The lowest one will be dropped. Typically, how many problems will we have each week for homework? All right, good. Uh, I'll get to that. Um, hang on. <laughs> Just so I can follow this flow. Um, so uh, yeah, um, we will provide lectures and uh, discussion session. Good. So this is how I suggest you will study for the course. So first of all, attend lectures if you can. This is where, as I mentioned, um, the point is to find out what you need to know for this course. Uh, I encourage you to take notes, use your notebook, write things down. Um, one of my mathematics uh, professor used to joke, the process of learning math is, that applies to physics as well, uh, is basic, so we made a joke, it's basically the professor writing things down on the whiteboard and the student copying from what's the whiteboard to your, to your uh, notebooks and the process of that information going from the whiteboard to your paper, it somehow has to go through your brain and you will absorb some percentage of that. So it's a good way to sort of keep you engaged and uh, not fall asleep in lecture, you know. Um, uh, and that's why I want to encourage 
the chat box as well, um, sort of have this streaming on the side. So you sort of are in the active mode, not just you know passive and shut off your brain, and you don't you're wasting um, your time. So you're actually absorbing the things that way. Okay. So right after the lectures, um, this is a very important component people don't talk about. Uh, you have to study, right? So it's actually you that's going to learn the material. Right? And I've justified this already before. Um, if, uh, hopefully you understand where that is coming from. So how do you learn the material, right? So your resources is this. Uh, look at your own lecture notes, what you've taken in, in class. Um, and I will sometimes give you complimentary le lecture notes. Um, oh, I will actually, I haven't mentioned here, I will send you the slides I make as well. Um, but don't let that stop you from taking your own notes. Uh, in fact, if you want to start taking notes right now, even on this admin stuff, feel free to just to get a hang of it. Right? Um, but yeah, so me giving you the notes. Uh, I, personally, I learn very well in just, you'll be surprised just by copying things um, down from one from A to B, you will actually retain some information. So the more you repeat this process, the more you learn. So repetition is my advice on how to do well um, and uh, take notes. Uh, the textbook is where the proper places out in the lectures, I'll tell you which chapter to look at um, uh, for each part. And uh, use, in now in this modern day and age, use any secondary resources you have, right? Go to YouTube, go to online lectures. Uh, to be honest with you, I learned most of my physics from YouTube. Well, <laughs> not most, that's a little bit of exaggeration, but it's very big help, right? So use them, uh, feel free to. Uh, the more different perspectives always will help, okay? Um, then do your homework. Uh, and I'll go through how the homework is scored in a second. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what I will provide. And then uh, use the extra support, uh, basically um, Piazza, as I mentioned already, but, and also try to form study groups. In fact, I think one silver lining of this online um, learning is actually with Slack, it will be actually much easier to create private channels of groups of four or five if you just want. So sometimes you can instant message each other and, and you can get very easy conversations. Whereas in a real life, sometimes it's hard to get everyone together to make a study group. Um, I mean, there's pros and cons. Sometimes real life is easier. I'm not saying that. But, uh, yeah, try, let's do the best of what we have, All right? Um, use our office hours as well. These are posted on Canvas. Uh, I basically um, try to schedule it so that we have some office hour, one of us will be present from Monday to Friday. So except for Wednesday in the middle. So sort of we spread it out in the beginning of the week and the end of the week, you'll get someone to ask if you need help. Okay, I'll go through the discussion session more in a second. Um, and uh, so to, in general, uh, we will have the test the topic test on Tuesdays, and uh, then on Thursdays there will be no test, right? But this week there will be no test, so the first test will be next Tuesday. Okay. Um, and I'll address the camera issue in a second. Um, so the discussion session, for, uh, yeah. So after you, if you, so first if you go to the lectures, learn the material. Um, if you struggle with that, uh, actually, usually when you just read the textbook, you don't know what you don't know until you do your homework, you'll realize, oh, I actually don't know this thing. So go back in your, to your textbook, look at your notes, try to study that. If you need help, find others. If you need more help, find us. Um, and then go to the Thursday discussion session. It's not taking attendance, um, so it's also up to you. Uh, I believe we have actually some good problems that I'm gonna give out. Um, so you basically have extra uh, problem solving opportunities with the group environment um, and also with the help of the TA. So they should be very helpful for you. Um, and I'm gonna treat you guys like adults. You guys, um, if you don't find it help, in fact, if you really don't find it helpful after one or two time, feel free not to show up. If you do well in the final exam, but it's your responsibility because um, they, uh, I will have, uh, you. yeah, so <laughs> I, I'm trying to find a less harsh way to say this, uh, there's no, um, if you don't do well, if you don't show up and you don't to the discussion sessions and you don't do well in the final, I can't help you, right? That, that's the end of it. You either have to retake the course or if you, if you don't get a grade as good as you hope. So if you're a very self-disciplined person and you realize you learn very well on your own, I actually have no problem with that. If you do the, go to the test, do well, go to the final exam, do well, I'm completely happy with that. But if you're like me, I'm not, sometimes I lack the self-motivation to you know, sit down and actually do the work. Having some sort of structure really helps, right? So going to these, um, I think would be very beneficial. Okay. And when you have tests, uh, we have five tests and we're dropping one of them. So basically four of them dropping your lowest grade. So four of your best tests will be count towards the 25%. So if you think about it, it's roughly 6% each. So that's a pretty low stakes compared to, you know, 100% out of the course. Um, so that's hopefully, you know, it's not too stressful. Um, and uh, that will give you a good idea on how well you understood the topic and the benefit the benefit for you is the test will be very similar to the final exam. So I'm calling them test, not a quiz. It's also pre precisely because of this. Roughly speaking, a test is one third of the final exam. 
Okay, so in a test, you'll get two short questions and one long questions. In the final exam, you'll get six short questions and three long questions. So when you're studying for the final exam, basically, if you just take three of your tests and put them together and do it in one go, that's how the final exam will almost identically look like. Right? So that's uh, it's a good, so, so that's what I mean by it's a, like a mini experience and right? a mock experience to get you used to the final exam and there'll be no surprise in the final exam. Okay, all right, so a little bit more detail how that would go. Um, so Tuesdays, usually the one with the test, um, uh, at first, I'll give you guys around five to 10 minutes max to ask the TA any last minute questions you guys have before we actually go into the test. If there's no questions, the TA will just jump into it. Um, your TA will explain more tomorrow um, in your first discussion session. Um, and uh, you, actually, you'll try, try it once with the test zero, I call it, that's not graded. Right? So you'll do this whole procedure once, it's, a, it's an even shorter one, um, that you'll try it once and upload and everything. Um, your TA will explain this more, so I'm not gonna go through too much. Um, and uh, yeah, so after you do that, and what I would, I think it's really helpful in the past that students tell me is immediately after the test, you get to see the solution and discuss the solution. So right after that, um, we'll give you five minutes to break into groups and discuss the test that you just submitted. Uh, because you submitted, that's the end of it, right? You can't change your answers. So now you can discuss the solution and then TA will review the test right away. So immediately you get instant feedback um, and immediately help you solidify with your understanding and you know what to improve next and you know what you, 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 you failed um, or you made any mistakes you made and you know how to do better. Right? And on th uh, Thursdays, um, maybe I should just say Simon, not go through this, probably a TA will go through this more. But yeah, essentially they'll give you a problem and uh, you'll split into groups, work on it a little bit and then uh, the TA will go through it together with you. Okay. Um, the tests, uh, yeah, I'll leave the, the cap. Basically, uh, I'm not using responders for the test. The final exam, I haven't decided yet. Um, your TA will go through more detail about how the tests work tomorrow, uh, so I can save a little time here. So the final exam, I'm leaning towards not using responders. Um, I've, heard, I've heard good things and bad things, um, so I probably will lean towards not using it. But I also want to make sure there's no cheating because um, it is really unfair to people who actually put in the work to study. So uh, I... For now, let me say, um, it'll probably be similar to a test. Turn on your Zoom camera during the test um, so that we can monitor you. Um, and I'll, we'll go through more of these details later on. Okay, but uh, I reserve the right to change my mind on the final exam. <laughs> For tests, you don't need to respond to this. Let's see, uh, when it comes to topic tests, what do you obtain for, where, where do you get the majority of the problems? Good question. Um, they will be very similar to the homework and the end of the chapter, in the textbook, the end of chapter problems. Um, it'll, either be directly from the end of chapter problems and I'll maybe change the numbers from 10 to you know, 13, I'll change it to 26 or you know, things like that. Um, either that way or from the homework, you know, which also comes from the textbook. So basically the end of chapter problems is your great arsenal um, of doing that. So if you want to do extra um, preparations, go through the extra, uh, um, end of chapter problems. Um, and if you happen to actually <laughs> solve one of the problems, um, the, it's probably, uh, yeah, so the test is probably not gonna be the same as the ones that you do in homework. It's gonna be uh, one of those from the end of the chapter that is not assigned as a homework. Um, if you happened in your own revision time to do the exact same problem that's given in tests, well, good for you. <laughs> Some people think it's unfair. I think that's very fair because you, did in, you, did, you put in the work and um, you did extra problems. And if you happen to solve that, that's great. Um, like I say, if you know the stuff, you know the stuff. All right, good. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, the rest, um, the TAs will go through and I probably don't have to. Um, even the grading, I think I'll leave that to the TA. The last thing I will say before I ask you have any questions is, for this week, like I say, the first week, nothing is graded, um, but we'll do some trial run because um, I like to try everything one time first, especially with all the new technology and stuff to make sure everything working and also so that you don't run into technology trouble and not get graded the first time around so you get you get a trial run. So we'll try the homework and the topic test first. So um, as you can see uh, on Wednesday, I want you, all of you to submit a homework. If you don't, I'm not gonna grade it, but really it's your benefit. So um, go to the Canvas website, if the computer works, right? Uh, go to home, uh, actually go, sorry, go to assignments. If you go to the homework page in pages, it'll just be the policies. So it's not the actual homework, right? So uh, go to trial submission, homework zero. If you haven't seen this already, some of you probably have, right? 
And here is the format that I want. Uh, you can see an example. Um, so basically just write it on line paper. That's all I ask. Um, and put your name and student ID on the top right. Uh, to be honest, this is less important for online submission. This is when I'm collecting in the past when I collect papers. I just want everyone's name on the same plate, you know, same right hand corner. So it's easy to lock the grades. But to be honest, that is number three is not that important because it automatically associates your name with your account. Um, but really the first two, uh, make, make it a PDF format um, and write it on line paper. Um, I've seen horrible handwritings without <laughs> line paper. So that's one thing I want people to do. If you, uh, if you have an iPad or a tablet and you, uh, and you want to download, uh, if you, uh, template. You probably can't see it well here. These lines over here, you can download this um, to whatever app you use. Um, if you don't have any notebooks with line papers, um, you can print this out and write on it. It's, I, I hope everyone has a legal pad or, or just notebooks with line paper. Okay, uh, the rest is just, uh, just me repeating how it is graded. Um, yeah, and uh, you can, I don't have the submit button because I am on instructor view. In fact, let me go to my incognito mode so I can show you the student view. Yeah, so you can submit there. So feel free to submit those there. Um, so do that by Wednesday, as you can see, I'll put the deadline on Wednesday. Um, it's not technically graded, but I will go through and take a look and skim through everyone's submission if you upload it, and I'll tell you if, if the format is right or not. Right? So you can submit something uh, like what I did there. Um, in fact, the homework one is already available, although um, today is basically just all the admin stuff. Um, so uh, after tomorrow's lecture, you can start actually doing this, or if you want to read ahead, you can start looking at this. Right, so like I said, these are the format over here, and then the homework problems, um, uh, just basically end of chapter problem, and uh, it's going to be listed here. So you should see a submit button. So this is the student view. Uh, you should see a submit button there. Okay, so that's homework, and uh, your TA will go through how tests works. Uh, oh, as you probably saw, there's probably, there's 10 questions, roughly 10 questions each in each homework. I think I've answered all the questions on the chat. Let's see how I'm doing. Perfect, I'm doing good on time. Good, so um, any questions? That's all I have to say. One question for discussions. Can we go to any TA's discussion session since they're at the same time? No, please don't. <laughs> uh, go to the one you're assigned to. Um, uh, so you should be assigned to, you should be, you have to enroll in the discussion session as well. So go to that one because um, otherwise, if there's like a hundred people in the same one, it will overwhelm with TA, right? So yeah, you go to that. Now, if for some reason, for the very few of you that summer session is, uh, the, the summer session department is being delayed and haven't assigned you a session yet, go to the third one, okay? Go to B3 with Roberto. He has the le least student at the moment, so it will be easier for him to handle. Um, and B1 and B2 are at maximum capacity. What textbook uh, uh, is it? Okay, good, great. Thank you for answering. It's in the syllabus as well. Um, what do we turn in for the trial assignment? Oh, good. Um, yeah, uh, I, let me go back to the trial assignment. You can just write your name on top. That's good enough. Um, again, basically, I just want to see everyone has a line paper uh, that they can use. Um, so let me see. Uh, yeah, this one. So. Uh, this one is typed, but you probably want to use pen and paper to, uh, pen, uh, pen, pen or pencil to write. Just something like this, that's good enough. Um, yeah. Uh, if you look at this, as, if you go to the test zero, um, you will see test zero is already uploaded. So uh, both the homework and test, I want, I'm just going to keep things simple, stick with the same format, right? So uh, in this example, I actually uploaded the solution to that test zero. So uh, if you want, you can, don't look at my solution, give it a try on test zero. Uh, although I haven't started the lecture yet, we'll start tomorrow. But uh, yeah, um, that's one thing you can do for the homework. Um, the, so um, you can do that before Wednesday. And like that. Oh, good question. Where can we find the reading schedule for the class? So, start, so tomorrow in the lecture, um, every time I start a new topic or subtopic, I will, um, I will tell you which reading chapter to refer to. But if you go to the syllabus, sorry for the long syllabus, guys. I'm just trying to put all, everything in one place. <laughs> um, the first four pages uh, is basically all the policies. Um, so that's what I told you to read. Um, oh, let me mention quickly about ground ba grade boundary later. After the four, four pages, you can see which uh, chapter each section would be. So as you can see, tomorrow, uh, lecture two, 
we will discuss that, and that refers to 13.7, and you can follow along there. Uh, there's a question about homework grading. Um, uh, you, can, you can read the, the home, go to the Canvas homework page. I'll just save some time. And um, finally, about grades, uh, it is, I'm not going to curve the grade. Uh, personally, I think curving grades are silly, because why would, if you do well, why would someone else doing well make you do worse? I don't understand that logic. So um, in principle, if you all do well, if you all get 85% or above, um, if you do extra credit that only requires you to do 75% on things, um, you, every one of you can get an A. So put in the work. I think we should reward hard work. This is America. Um, <laughs> so if you do, uh, the, yeah, I, I think everyone should have equal chance to succeed. So that's my philosophy. Okay. Good. So lots of information. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. Um, tomorrow we'll uh, start properly, as you can see in the schedule. Um, if you want to read ahead, feel free to start with 13.7. And if there's no other questions, then we'll uh, call it a day and have a nice day. If you have questions, use Piazza and everyone start answering those, whether it's physics question or admin question, um, you will be able to get great uh, extra credits for that. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you for listening for me babbling on. Hopefully you enjoyed this. All right, see you.